Hi, Kerry here from MyCloud Bookkeeping. I work with small businesses and entrepreneurs to help them to keep their records in order using QuickBooks Online so they can make their sales tax payments on time, understand their business, have reports that help them manage their cash flow all on a regular basis. And today we're going to talk about the really, really important function of reconciling. Uh, we're going to walk through the example of reconciling a credit card, but the same thing counts for reconciling your bank account. And what reconciling does is it makes sure on a regular basis that your records agree to the bank's records. Now, what we're assuming is that what the bank has is correct and we're comparing it into QuickBooks and that's very important. We, we don't want to be going the other way. So we're going to obtain a statement to compare to QuickBooks. And some of the reasons why the records might be different other than the bank error, we'll assume the bank has not made an error, is if you've added things from the um, bank feed, your connection to bank from the bank to QuickBooks twice, that happens a lot. I call them duplicated transactions. If you do have a problem with that, check the link below. It can be quite time consuming to clean up and I've created a course to help with that. So that can be one of the, the ways that things go wrong. Another thing is if you're using expense capture software such as HubDoc or Receipt Bank, sometimes it comes in one way and then you enter it another. So you've got something sitting here that's unpaid, but you have an expense you've added here. Just things can get messed up. And when you're doing your reconciliation, as you'll see when we move into the steps, you're able to select the items that are on the statement and see if there's anything left over. Because you think about it, if you've added something from software and you've added it from your bank feed, it's going to be in twice. Your profit number won't be correct, your expenses will look too high, and you can't make good decisions because you don't actually know how much money you owe on that credit card. So let's have a look and walk through the steps now. Before you reconcile, it's always important to make sure you've dealt with all of the items that are showing up on the bank feed. Because if you have things here that you have not yet recorded, Obviously, you, you records won't be complete. You won't have things to reconcile. I do have a checklist. It'll be in the downloads. It's something about, I don't know, steps to take before you do reconciliation or something. Check that out. So now that we're here, we have a number of different options to get to reconcile. We can click here and choose reconcile. We can pop up here and choose reconcile. Or I don't know why this is my favorite. I always pop into the register and click reconcile here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is have a look at your statement uh, and make sure that the beginning balance agrees. So the, this here is the statement balance from the 31st of July. It will be the opening balance on the statement you look at now. Now, often credit card statements, they don't have a nice clean month end. It's going to be the 5th of August to the 6th of September or something like that. But just make sure that whatever this beginning balance says is the opening balance on the statement that you're looking at. I hope that makes sense. So then you want to read the closing balance on the statement you have. So I've done that with my fixed statement and mine is always also at the end of the month because it's not real. <laughs> We're in the fake company. So I'm going to click start reconciling and here's what's happened. It's popped in and it's decided that everything that's green here that's come from the bank feed is correct and everything that hasn't is not. And I can very easily see how to fix this 1000 difference. I click this right here, but that doesn't really help us with our exercise because imagine if we've got, I don't know, 50, a hundred transactions here. So I would be happy now if this was me, but if it was a larger exercise and I didn't really know what was going on, I would put a check mark here. I would select everything and then I'd put a check mark here to unselect everything or deselect everything. The reason I do that is there could be items like this hiding on another page. So you might think you're starting clean, but you're not actually. So if you're going to go through the process where it doesn't agree when you very first open this, then this is the way I would make sure I was doing that. So I would then look at my statement. I'm going to look at my statement and see the payment of 1000. Not sure why that wasn't on the bank feed. But anyway, I'm looking at my statement and I'm seeing this one. I'm looking at my statement, I'm seeing this, looking at my statement, seeing this. So notice we're going from the statement to QuickBooks, not the other way around. And here we go here. Now, what do I have here? I have a credit card credit on the 30th of August that for some reason has not gone through yet. And then I have a purchase on the 31st of August. Now, when these items do show up on the bank feed, they should match. And it does make sense. Perhaps this is a weekend and the items haven't been posted yet. Whenever you have unreconciled items, just, just 
just look at them. Do they make sense? Is it old? Like, for example, if this he was dated the 30th of July, I would treat it very differently. I would either be following up to see why I didn't get my credit or I would be wondering if I've entered it twice or made a mistake. So anything that's that's white and hasn't been included in the, the reconciliation is normally, it's always something you want to consider why, and it might be something that requires further action. But here, it's just simply near the end of the, the statement date. If it doesn't clear next month, then I'll be concerned. Now, if you do have a lot of old white items there, it's important you do investigate them because they're making your results inaccurate. For example, here, this $156 for utilities, if this never comes through on the credit card, then maybe I've recorded it twice and maybe it's $1,500. It could be anything and it's overstating your expenses. So anything that doesn't clear does need to be looked at and that's extremely important. Some people get to zero here, they're super excited and then they have just lines and lines and lines of items that are unreconciled and they're recorded as expenses so their credit card balance is wrong but also their expenses are incorrect. And I do have a course for finding and fixing duplicated transactions because it is the most common error I see. So if that's a problem for you, check that out. There should be a link below. And uh, if you've got this all done and it's so beautiful, that's fantastic. You can click finish now and it's all done. So as I mentioned earlier, there is a course for if you have doubled up transactions, which hopefully you don't. I also have some free downloads. Uh, there's a checklist, what to do before you do your reconciliation. I have some other things on matching from the bank feed. So check out the resources below. Hopefully they will help you. And if this video was helpful, click like, subscribe to my channel. Cheers.